Seriously, my dog is crazy about a ball. She is absolutely nuts about a ball. She has been chasing the ball the entire time I've been trying to film this video. And I love her to death, but man, just leave the ball alone. What did it do to you? Hey folks, I'm Mike, and today I am super excited to bring you a vlog about something that I have been trying to do for several weeks now. And that is specifically use an iPad as a development environment for a Node.js environment. Now in my day-to-day -day job, uh, I help the customer team support our customers. And also I'm an engineer writing Node and Ruby. And I got, came up with this crazy idea, which would be, man, it would be great if I could just like, you know, I, I work remotely, um, my, the rest of my team's based in California, that gives me a lot of freedom to go places and do things, and I was sitting on the beach with my family and I thought, man, you know, it would be really great this summer if I could just maybe bring like a, an iPad out here and work on the beach and not have to lug around my big 15 inch laptop, right? And be out here with my family and have a good time. And so that started this idea of, could I, in fact, make an iPad work for me as a development environment? And today, I'm so excited because I get to tell you that yes, I figured out how to do it. Now, there's a couple things that you need. First off, you need a relatively modern iPad. I tried initially doing this on an iPad 4, just a little bit too slow. Having iOS 11 is a huge help in terms of doing any kind of real, typing and work on um, an iPad. So a friend of mine is loaning me an iPad Air that she is not using, just sitting in a drawer. So here you go, have it. So uh, obviously one of the key things that you need for this type of a, of, a, of a thing that we're about to do is you need a cellular or Wi-Fi connectivity. So it would be super awesome if the iPad were to have a cellular capability. It doesn't in this instance, but I can always tether off my phone, so that's not the, the end of the world. The next thing you need is you need a server somewhere, um, either in, uh, in EC2 or in one of the, just a bunch of other places that you can host a server. And that server is going to act as your repository for your code, because you can't pull your code down locally onto your iPad and push it back up. That also really gives you flexibility in terms of things that you could typically do from a command line, you can now do on the server. So you need, like I said, two apps uh, in order to, do, to, to make this workflow work for you. Now really, Coda is the one that you need the most. That's where you're gonna edit your code. You're also gonna set up an SFTP, and you, you do get a, an SSH terminal in there. So if you just wanna go for Coda, you can use that. It's from Panic, and it is truly just a really awesome piece of software. Um, the, I like Blink Shell, which I found first, which you know my original plan was, oh man, if I get a really good shell, then I could go do some VI wizardry, and no, I don't wanna do that. Um, but Blink Shell is an incredible shell that lets you have things like multiple tabs and uh, it does Mosh and SSH. So Mosh is just a, 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 a kind of a more updated, better uh, version of SSH. Um, there's just so much you can do with Blink Shell that it is really, truly a staple. And so the basic idea is you're going to host your code on the remote server and then your iPad becomes a a dumb terminal, if you will, to a certain degree that allows you to edit locally on your iPad and then push it back up to your server. That's what Coda does. Um, it does all that through SFTP. Once it gets back up to the server, then you just bounce out into Blink Shell, into a terminal. You can commit your code, you can do whatever you need to do, uh, and then you know issue a pull request, whatever. Um, so let's get right to it. What we're going to do is we are going to SSH into the remote server, clone the Johnny5 repository, which is something that we use for Nodebots. Then we will edit in code, we'll add the site in Coda, edit it, and then push that change back up. And I'll show you back in Blink Shell uh, how it change. So first off, let's go into Blink Shell. We get into Blink Shell and I'm going to SSH into my server. 
So I'm in, I'm gonna CD into Git, and then I'm going to Git clone the Johnny5 repository. So here we go, we're pulling it down. Okay, good to go. All right, we're gonna leave Blink Shell now. We're gonna go into Coda. I'm gonna add a new site, which we will call Johnny5. And what we'll do is we're gonna set up our server. set up my user we're gonna set the key it's a custom key an imported key all right and now we should be able to connect to the remote server and we're going to get into Johnny 5 we're going to choose that as our base for the remote path now we're done so I'm gonna go into Johnny 5 and you can see that on this right hand side right here are all my remote files so if I go into something like util and look for server lab. I can edit in Coda. And you can see that I get, this is just straight up JavaScript. It's actually really useful. Um, I've got a lot of I've got syntax highlighting, different colored comments. It looks like a fully featured development environment. So I'm gonna close server labs. I'm gonna go back out to the Johnny5 repository. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit the readme. We're gonna edit this in Coda. Come down here and we're gonna say hello world I'm gonna hit this button and save it it's now pushed back up to the remote server uh, we can leave this go into here CD into Johnny 5 all right and we can show that you know, here we go we're going to less the readme and right there you can see our edits which is great this is all remote all right honestly i am super excited i think that is really fun i think it is just a i think it's going to be a great way to get me out of uh, my space a little bit um, you know, just take the iPad with me to a coffee shop. The dog. The dog. Dog, leave the ball alone. Take the iPad with me to a coffee shop. Do a little bit of work from the coffee shop without having to lug around this big laptop. Go to the beach. Just go wherever you need to do where an iPad is easier to carry around than a big 15-inch MacBook Pro. So... How, what are the limitations of this? The limitations are that number one, you've got to have a, a constant connection in order to really make this happen. Your code doesn't even live locally on the iPad. It lives in the cloud. Um, so you've, you've got to have a constant connection. You've got to have a cloud server that you can connect to. And that is truthfully, I mean, those are a dime a dozen nowadays. You can get that on Amazon. You don't have to do it with AWS. You could do it with, I think there's companies like CloudFront, Bluehost probably does it at this point. You just need a server that you can spin up. It doesn't have to be a big beefy server. It's not doing a lot of heavy lifting, um, but it is going to, um, uh, it, it's the place where you might run your tests. It's where your code is going to live. It's where you're going to create your branches and things like that. Um, you know, when it comes to actually deploying your code, then then that becomes a bigger question of your tool chain in terms of, you know, how does this stuff, um, where does it live and, and things like that. But for light editing and for getting things, you know, that are pretty straightforward that you know you you might want to have maybe test somewhere else um, then this is a great idea I guess testing is probably another perhaps uh, downfall you know I think if you were to do a survey of developers right now about who tests locally with a full the full stack spun up versus who tests in some kind of remote environment I think you're gonna find that a lot of people test in a remote environment this setup allows you to test in a remote environment such as a staging or a dev server um, 
but you're obviously you're not you're probably not going to run any of the stack locally on the iPad. It's just not built for that. Um, how does this get better? And this is where it gets really fun to think about. Um, you know, obviously one of the big things is it, you add a keyboard to this and it really becomes a cool experience. Like I've got, I've got this old clunky Bluetooth keyboard right here um, uh, and a 3D printed stand that I can put my iPad in and I can actually, you know, type on a keyboard and, and then, you know, touch the screen. Uh, to do the things that I need to do. Um, that's actually kind of an interesting way to work. Um, it gets even more interesting when you start thinking about some of the, the iPad Pros with their smart attach keyboards and you know those with a 12.9 inch screen. I mean, I, I really honestly have never wanted an iPad that big before, but now I could see that that you know could become a primary development machine in the right circumstances. Um, it's got a huge screen. It's got multi. It's got multi windows. Um, you can do, uh, you know, split screen and stuff like that with it. Um, it is a. It's a pretty compelling argument at this point. So, I am. I mean, at the end of the day, I just wanted to prove that this was possible for me, and it is, and I'm super happy about it. Um, it's kind of like we've had Nerdvana here for the last couple days. Um, my team was super excited about it. They're like, hey, this sounds really neat. You know, maybe we, maybe we need to issue some iPads to all the developers, right? Um, it is a cool way to work. Uh, I'm actually, I haven't worked a full day with it yet. I'm a, I think I'm gonna dive in and work a full day uh, on Monday with it. It's Saturday right now, I'm recording. Uh, but, you know, I am, I will report back on really how usable it is and, and how, um, how easy it is to use on a day-to-day -day basis. I hope you guys have thoroughly enjoyed this. Remember to like and subscribe, um, hit that notification button, smash it, you know, 2018 style, like Peter McKinnon says, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and you have a great and wonderful day. Talk to you later, bye.